for Dick Sheridan. He knows that Sean Jones has been outstanding throughout his Georgia Tech career because of his ability to hurt you in so many ways. Sheridan says it'll be a big challenge this well, afternoon. Sean uh, puts a lot of pressure uh, on your defense, uh, a lot like uh, Charlie Ward. He's an experienced Charlie Ward, maybe a half step uh, slower, but has the same great reactions and instinct and, and, and running ability to go along with, with being an excellent passer. And so it is. Both quarterbacks, both coaches very well aware of what the other can do. The question is, can one defense stop the other with the emotion level that both displayed a week ago against their very traditional arch rivals? Our game conditions are going to go downhill from here. Temperature 60 degrees. The wind a factor, but it's blowing across the field. And a good chance that rain may break out because of that Gulf storm that's been churning up the southeast corner of this country. It should be uh, in the Atlanta vicinity by mid-afternoon. Kevin Tisdale to receive the kick of Jimmy Ziskai. And we will be underway here in Atlanta. Lethon Flowers is back with him. Tisdale takes it five yards deep and this one won't come out. So Georgia Tech will take the ball over at their own 20-yard line. Let's take a look at their starting lineup. You can see that Jimmy Lincoln is in a tailback. Dorsey Levins is banged up. Likewise, William Bell, so Michael Smith will be at fullback. McGillan Rodriguez will start, but we'll see a lot. A rebuild offensive line featuring a couple of redshirt freshmen and a couple of fifth-year seniors who hadn't played much before the 92 campaign. John Jones, there you see him. Five touchdowns on the season. No interceptions and 113 attempts. On first down, Paul Reeves chasing him in the backfield. Loses the football. And I believe Sean Jones covered up in time to maintain possession back at his own six-yard line. Sean Jones eluding Carl Reeves. Reeves reaching out and gets a piece of the ball. Somebody did not pick up Carl Reeves. He comes in untouched, watch the stretch, and he just deflected the ball away from Sean Jones. A break for Georgia Tech that he was able to recover. Aikens, Logo, and Reeves on the front line. A good linebacking core. David Merritt having a great year, and we've talked about that fine secondary. Keenan Walker is in as a wide receiver on second down. There's another fumble in the backfield. Lincoln has it. Lincoln gets stretched out to the 11-yard line where Sebastian Savage drops him out of bounds after a five-yard gain. Boy, not a good start for Georgia Tech. Just a straight handoff to Jimmy Lincoln, and Lincoln and Sean Jones not connecting at all. A fortunate bounce. Good job by Sebastian Savage to stretch that play because they had some blocks on the corner, but Savage kept the play going wide until he got some help. And Fools be into the lineup as one wide relief receiver. Two backs, a third down and 19. Shovel pass ahead for Lincoln. Lincoln brought to the 19-yard line by Mike Reed. It is a gain of eight, nowhere near the first down. The punting units come on. NC State deferred on that opening kickoff because they felt like they could establish something in this game with their good defensive unit. The three and out certainly uh, justifies the decision of Dick Sheridan. Jason Bender back to kick, and there is Ricky Turner filling some big shoes now that Liddell George is out for at least three weeks. With that broken bone in his leg. Turner at the 37. Straight ahead and dropped at the 42-yard line. Tackle made specifically there by Boyd Andrews out of Atlanta. And the North Carolina State offense is on the field. Let's take a look at their starters. Terry Jordan coming off that career game. Anthony Barber and Greg Maynard have had good years. Lawrence Griffiths and Goins and others. Mike G and George Hegeman on the right side, along with Todd Ward, the center, have paced the way for that offensive line. First and 10 for the 42. Here's Barber. Barber into the secondary and across midfield, where he's very close to a first down. Kevin Peoples and Mike Williams bring him down. And it's going to be about a nine-yard game. Let's look at the defense. One of the interesting matchups will be the all-conference defensive tackle Coleman Rudolph against the giant George Hegeman. The linebackers have been up and down. Williams had a great game against Clemson. Marcus Coleman is in for the injured Curly Day at right corner. Second and one. All just into Georgia Tech territory. Jordan with a pitch to Barber. And Barber works 
works his way down to the Georgia Tech 45-yard line. First man to hit him was Marcus Coleman. So it'll be another first down for North Carolina State. As you look at the defense, there's Mitch Jordan. The inside linebackers have taken a while to come along. They were embarrassed. The entire defense was embarrassed against Virginia, but they played much more steady football against Clemson a week ago. But gave up their share of yardage on the ground. They're trying to slow that down. It's not worked in the first couple of plays. Over 500 yards in the last two ball games. Three wide outs for NC State on first down. Jordan complete the goal. Little stutter step gets him there for the first down. He's dropped by Marlon Williams, but it's going to be about a 10-yard gain to the 34-yard line. Well, the good success running the ball the first two times enables you to run the play action on first down. And after the play fake, Eddie Goins is all alone. Good job on the play action by Jordan. You can see how open Goins is on the little stop-up route in the zone coverage. Williams, the linebacker, had been sucked inside. First and 10. Jamal Cox wraps him up and throws him down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a gain of three. Brings up second down and seven. Watch Cox and Mitch Jordan, the linebackers, read the flow, and on the cutback, Jamal Cox, the sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland, is able to stop Barber for the shortest game thus far by the Wolfpack. Dallas Dickerson is now into the ball game. At the fullback spot, he lines up in a wing. On second down and seven. Jordan to throw, has a rush on, complete to Griffiths. At the 26-yard line, it's a gain of four. Marcus Coleman is there for the tackle. Peoples put a big rush on Terry Jordan. You are going to see Georgia Tech do a lot of stunting, particularly from the outside. And they had Kevin Peoples, their strong safety, blitzing on the play. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Guys, last week in Chapel Hill, Terry Jordan completed his last 11 passes. The two straight today gives him 13 in a row now without a miss. Only missed two a week ago against Carolina. And they were both dropped. Third and two, no score. Greg Maynard drives the ball inside the 25. He needs the 24. It is going to be very, very close. Close enough to measure. Right now, if they were to kick from here, Jack, it would be a 25, 32, 42-yard kick. So they're going to go for it. Well, they don't have to go for it because they got that first down. Got it to the 24. Robert Wood, the referee, didn't even bother to measure. So don't bring those chains out here. Out of the eye formation on first and 10. Pitch to Barber. Williams was there. Everybody's beating over Anthony Barber at the 30-yard line. Really putting the heat on was Marlon Williams. Well, again, it's the pressure from the outside. Georgia Tech, by physical standards, is a small defense. Marcus Coleman shakes off the block, and he is there with help as well. You can see Coleman Rudolph is there. Williams coming back into the picture. It was Williams who stretched the play out initially. Second and 16. No score, NC State in Georgia Tech territory at the 30-yard line. Jordan with a look in. 14 consecutive completions to Reggie Lawrence. It's to the 24-yard line, a gain of six. Marcus Coleman on the stop. Checked off at the line of scrimmage. He saw Georgia Tech rolled up again, putting pressure on from the outside. Called the little hot pass, the stop-up route to Lawrence. I think he was disappointed that he didn't elude the tackle of Marcus Coleman. But to get back to my previous point, Steve, with the exception of Kevin Battle at nose guard, that's a small defense by Division 1A standards. Yes, it is. Battle runs at about 300 pounds. Short throwback screen to Goins. Goins down to about the 16-yard line. It was third and 10. He needed 10 to get it. He got eight of them. Elliott Fortune is there on the tackle. But it's not going to be enough. This brings the field goal unit on as Eddie Goins makes the catch. It'll be at the 17-yard line, so this will be a 34-yard kick, 33-yard kick for Steve Vitatek. Vitatek out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina thus far this season, five for six. And three of his boots have been at 40 yards plus. This one for 30. 
two is no good. Wide left. NC State drives deep and does not take advantage of the opportunity as Georgia Tech holds on the midfield goal. Late 29 to go in the first, and there's no score in Atlanta. Atlanta, North Carolina State, and Georgia Tech each have had the football once. Neither has been able to score. Georgia Tech is still looking for their first official yardage in the plus column. As they look at first and ten for their own 20. Old setback is Jimmy Lincoln. Lincoln with a deep handoff. It's blocking to Lincoln out over the 25-yard line. It'll be a gain of five. David Merritt and John Aikens in on the tackle for the Wolfpack. Last year's ACC Rookie of the Year, Jimmy Lincoln, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh, got up behind Big Woody Milam, the fifth-year senior at right guard, and got some positive yardage on first down. Second down and five at the 25 coming up. Sean Jones. Delay handoff to Jeff Wright. Wright dances over several would-be tacklers and gets out over the 30-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down. Dwayne Washington and Carl Reeves in on the stop as you look at Wright so far this season. Georgia Tech came into this game feeling like they had to do a better job of running the football. They run the counter trap action, and you see the good block at the point of attack by Jim Cushon and Gary Brown, and Jeff Wright in at fullback picks up the first Tech first down. First and ten. Throw is complete to Rodriguez. And Rodriguez is brought out of bounds at the 35-yard line, and we have a face mask call likely to be added on to this play as well. Sebastian Savage on the stop. Excuse me, Steve. Inadvertent, I'm sure, but Savage getting a hold of the face gear, and that'll cost it. NC State some additional yardage. Get close to a first down. Got about four yards on the play and the five. Five yard face mask penalty on the defense. Repeat first down. Get a nice first and one call because of it. A free free down. Well, this is that safe first down pass. You have Rodriguez lined up inside and the action flows to the inside. He breaks to the outside. You let him catch the ball and then do his thing for as much yardage as he can get. His 14th pass reception of the season. They have a stoppage of play here as they try to set the chains. Uh, the NC State coaches are asking, are you sure it's first down? Well, it has to be because the penalty took place while the play was going on. So if it's against the defense, it means you repeat the down. So it is first and about a yard and a half. Goolsby and Rodriguez are split to the wide side. Out of the eye, otherwise. The toss to Lincoln, and he's going to throw it again. Got a man deep. That was Goolsby in coverage. Sebastian Savage and Ricky Turner. Not a bad throw for a tailback. That ball was 40-plus yards in the air for Jimmy Lincoln. The Georgia Tech fans love the play call. Why not first and less than two? Air it out. A lot of times when you run this play, you worry about your tailback getting the ball out there. No problem with that throw from Lincoln. Second down and one now for Georgia Tech. They're at their own 40-yard line. Lincoln gets the first down and more. Up over the 45-yard line, brought down by Dwayne Washington and John Aikens. And it'll be a gain on the play of about six. Sets up another first down for the Tech offense. Well, if the Georgia Tech defense is small, the NC State defense might be smaller. And John Aikens hobbles off the field with an injury. He is one of their bigger guys on the defensive front at 270. Mike Harrison playing in his place right now, first and 10 for 47. No score. First quarter here in Atlanta. Jimmy Lincoln in the end 
SEC state territory at the 44-yard line. Brought down by Dwayne Washington, Damian Covington, and Ricky Turner, but it's very close to another first down. Watch the block by number 89, Jeff Papashek, on Tyler Lawrence right there. Enabled Lincoln to cut it up inside. I tell you what, so far, if Georgia Tech's had trouble running the ball, it's not evident on this drive. Well, you got to figure, Jack against uh, Virginia, they didn't have time to run the football. They were they got down in a hurry to Virginia. Lincoln right into the pile of people off right guard. Ricky Logo is there as he tried to follow Papashak's block for the first down. He'll be close to it at the 43-yard line. Be a real challenge for Ricky Logo this afternoon. Most of the day he is going to get double teamed and occasionally triple teamed. The heart of that NC State defense. See, this time he gets the single block from Gary Brown and he's more than equal to the task in terms of stopping Lincoln after a short gain on the play. Georgia Tech only needed a little to get a first down. Looks like they'll get another one here as they stretch out the chains. Georgia Tech is a team that, as they do get the first down, they are not a team that requires a lot of time with the football. As a result, their total time of possession is 16 less, 16 minutes less than their two opponents. Well, one thing about the Bill Lewis offense, they won't give you a lot of different plays, but they'll give you a lot of different looks. Here's another one here. Two wide outs, two tight ends. Single setback is Jimmy Lincoln on first and 10. He gets the call. He gets pursued to the corner and not very much yard. It's maybe two. On the tackle, driving him out, Dwayne Washington. Keith Battle and David Merritt were in the vicinity as well. You look at Washington. Well, that time Anthony Rice, the second tight end, did not make a real good block on Keith Battle, although Battle didn't make the tackle. He was the guy who extended the play, and there just wasn't enough room to turn the corner. Eight of three, second and seven. Football just shy of the 40-yard line of North Carolina State. Jones scrambling. Reeves in pursuit. The pass is complete. It's to McGill at the 33, make it the 34-yard line. He's going to be shy of the first down. Savage on the tackle, a gain of six. He needed seven. Let's go to the sidelines on Mike Hogwood. Injury update on John Aikens. He has an injured shoulder. They call it a stinger. They do expect him to be back. They do expect him to be back in uh, just a couple of plays. But right now, he's just kind of flexing the shoulder. Hopefully back in a minute. You saw the play in which he was injured on, and you see him on the sidelines. You get that pinched nerve up in the shoulder and the neck area. And it goes numb for a while. Third and less than a yard. No score. Georgia Tech and NC State territory at the 34. Oh, looked like it was tipped. Walker gets it, and he is good enough for the first down of the 25-yard line. Savage and Turner in on the stop for North Carolina State, but Jack, this is a pretty good-looking Tech drop. Well, you've got everything going your way here. Surprising call on the pass on third and short, and Keith Battle got a piece of that football, but because Keenan Walker was the only guy out there, he was able to adjust to the ball, catch it, and get the first down. Up to that point, Walker had caught three passes, two for touchdown. First and ten. Looking for Goolsby. Jones overthrows him. Coverage provided by Dwayne Washington. As you look at Sean Jones. The difference between Sean Jones this year and the leadership role that he took last year, he forced a lot of footballs last year, and as a result, he piled up some interceptions. That hasn't been the case this season. Well, of course, Georgia Tech came into the 91 campaign off the national championship. They were without William Bell. They were without Jeff Wright. They felt like their offense revolved around Sean, and he tried to do more than he should have. Second down and 10. Ali Harris is in at fullback now with Jimmy Lincoln at the tail. This is Lincoln with a full head of steam brought down by Damian Covington at the 20-yard line, a gain of five. Ali Harris, like an armed guard escort, watch the fullback lead the play through and make the good hit on the linebacker. Gary Brown was pulling on the play, and although Covington made the stop, it was five yards downfield. Here's Lincoln getting the start instead of Dorsey Levins today. 12th play of the drive now for Georgia Tech. Jones scrambling, battling pursuit. 
digs and throws it away on third and five. And that'll bring up fourth down, and looks like the kicking unit is coming on, Scott Sisson. And this will be a fairly significant boot. NC State, as we said, is small, but they are extremely fast with people like Reeves, the freshman Harrison, Keith Battle from the outside. Sean Jones, a year ago, would have tried to make the miracle pass. This time he said, let's come away with points. This is going to be a 37-yard kick out of the hole of Bill Weaver. Scott Sisson, who's 6 for 7, his longest offering of 50 yards. Dead center down the field. It is up, and it is good. Georgia Tech takes the early lead as they drive downfield from their own 20-yard line. They make it pay in 12, actually 13 plays. Scott Sisson puts the Yellow Jackets on top. Let's pause now for a word from your local station. Eddie Goins and Reggie Lawrence are back. Goins, a newcomer to this kick return team, taking the spot of Anthony Barber for NC State. 4.29 left to go in the first quarter of play. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood at Bobby Dodge Stadium in Atlanta. This is going to be Lawrence. He'll get it at the two. And he is nailed by Hendricks. David Hendricks at the 15-yard line. A 13, actually a 14-yard return. Bill Lewis told us at the outset, emotions, who could maintain the high intensity from a week ago? Well, David Hendricks has come to play. He came flying down the field, and once Reggie Lawrence hesitated, he was lost. Robert Hinton, Eddie Goins, split wide out. Both offenses have been able to move here this afternoon. Greg Maynard, the lone setback, and he gets the call. And there's not much there. He gets up over the... 15 out to about the 18 yard line. Richard Kimsey is in on the tackle for Georgia Tech. We're looking over the shoulder of Brian Baxter, who is missing today because of an injury. Kevin Battle playing in his place at nose. Second down and seven at the 19. on and Neil Auer is nailed just as he was in the vicinity of that football. Jordan was the man who unloaded on him. Coleman Rudolph was right in the face of Terry Jordan. Well, they wanted that outside pressure to come on so they could throw the middle screen to the tight end, but Jamal Cox and Mitch Jordan did not bite on it. See all the pressure coming? This is what they wanted. But look at Jamal Cox is right there, and the ball was nearly picked off by Marcus Coleman. Third down and seven coming up. North Carolina State trailing 3-0. Jordan back to throw. He is sacked. Kinsey and Rudolph converge at the 12-yard line. They have gotten a little better each week. And with the All-American Coleman Rudolph leading the way, the first sack of the afternoon. NC State gave up four to North Carolina a week ago. Four different publications in the preseason said Coleman Rudolph is the best defensive tackle in the country. I agree. He didn't do anything to hurt his reputation on that play, that's for sure. Jim Kilpatrick at the mouth of the end zone. Drives Lincoln back to the 35. And he brings it back to the 44. A nine-yard return on that 51-yard punt by NC State. The tackle made by tight end Neil Auer. But the Yellow Jacket offense is getting set to take the field once more. With 2.56 left to go in the first quarter, Georgia Tech leads by a field goal. 4-5 speed doesn't begin to tell you the elusiveness, the competitiveness of Sean Jones in a scramble situation. Mike Harrison with a great rush, he thought he had him. You gotta have more than the jersey on Sean Jones. Great effort by Goolsby to make the catch. Back to live action, throwing again, this time incomplete and hit. Smith was the intended receiver, logo was all over Sean Jones. Well, NC State's 
best hope defensively this afternoon is to try and put as much pressure as possible on Sean Jones. You're going to have to run the risk of giving up a big running play in order to get people upfield and try and pressure Sean Jones, yet keep him in the pocket. Not an easy assignment for those guys wearing the white and red. Jones looking at second down. At 10 from the NC State 37. Rush was on. Lead intended for Anthony Rice. But boy, let me tell you, Tyler Lawrence put a hit on Sean Jones as he released. Alan Johnson covering on the play as you look at Lawrence. Lawrence is favoring an ankle. He had his ankle put in a splint last night, an air splint last night, just to immobilize it. He's had trouble with the ankle chronically over the last couple of weeks. But they have to have him in there. He provides such great pressure from the outside. Tech is 0 for 2 on third down conversions. Yellow Jackets lead by three. Jones looking for Walker. And a foot race with Washington. And that'll bring up fourth down on the punting unit is on. One of the real keys this afternoon, the two times we have seen Georgia Tech stop, it's been because they came up with zero yardage or negative yardage on first down. It really seems to be first down is going to be a major key for the NC State defense if they hope to shackle this Yellow Jacket offense. Turner, knowing that there's a pretty good chance he won't get to return this kick by Jason Bender. Balls for the fair catch at the 11-yard line. And that's where North Carolina State will stand by and get set for their offense. But you know, you look at the emotional level of these two football teams. Coleman Rudolph talked about that. We had an opportunity to talk to him yesterday. He feels that that's one of the keys in this defense's improvement. I'm glad now. I mean, I hadn't, I hadn't regretted it yet. I'm sure a few more years, as soon as I get away from this place, I'll, I'll maybe regret it. But, uh, you know, they, they can take them off now for a, a pretty penny, though, so I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> Jordan scrambling for his life on first down. Incomplete, intended for Lawrence. Cabin battle was all over Terry Jordan. Coleman Rudolph was also there. Coleman talking about Buzz, the mascot of Georgia Tech, is tattooed on his arm now. And like he said, maybe when he's in his late 40s or something, he'll think, why did I do that? But <laughs> live with it right now, Terry Jordan was able to at least scramble enough to get a reset for second and ten instead of second and long, but it appears that both teams are committing a lot of people to the pressure on the quarterback. Goins and Hinton are the wide outs. That's Lawrence in motion. Screen set up for Goins. He eludes battle. But he won't elude Kevin Peoples and Lethon Flowers who drop him at the 17-yard line. It's a gain of five, brings up third and five. Second time they've run that little fold screen. Terry drops back. The wide receiver sort of circles around and comes back underneath the offensive lineman who come out for the screen. It's that idea of trying to get the defense to over-pursue and run back against the grain. They got five yards of the 10. Big third down play. This is the third third down conversion attempt for NC State. They're one out of two. You saw Goins limping on the sideline. We'll get a check on that injury. Jordan. His team down, here's Hinton with a reception, and Hinton is out to the 39-yard line. A gain of 22 on the play, Lethon Flowers with the stop. It's a first down for the Wolfpack. Robert Hinton, the guy who tends to run many of the crossing patterns over the middle, and when you run this deep dig route, as it's called, you better have good protection. Look at the time that Jordan has the free space in the middle of the pocket. And Robert Hinton just ran away from Don Hicks in the linebacker. Anthony Barber on first down. Looked like all kinds of daylight was going to open up, but quickly it checked down. Mitch Jordan was the man first on the scene. You can really say, Steve, it's the same game plan for the Georgia Tech defense as the NC State defense. This is going to be a, g a game in which you have to be productive defensively on first down or you're really going to be up against it. Second down and nine for the Wolfpack at their own 40. Pass is complete and not for much yardage. Anthony Barber gets the catch. They're going to mark his forward progress to the 45-yard line. 
They'll give him a gain of five. Lethon Flowers with a great open field tackle. Lethon looking like an NCAA wrestler here with the takedown. Has Anthony Barber and says, come on, that's two points, that's a takedown. We're in the circle. Griffiths and Lawrence are back into the ball game as you look at Lethon Flowers out of Columbia, South Carolina. Third down and four. North Carolina State trailing 3-0. They're on 45, that's our in motion, and we've got a whistle. The end of the first quarter of play. Time runs out on the Wolfpack in the first quarter. They'll change position of the ball on the field, and we'll be back with more action here in Atlanta. Scott Sisson's field goal, the only thing showing on the scoreboard. After one, 3 nothing. Georgia Tech. And Mike Hogwood. Georgia Tech, Scott Sisson, a 37-yard field goal with 4.29 left in the first, the only score on the board. North Carolina State with a football, looking at third down and four, their own 45-yard line. Two wide outs out of the eye formation. Quarterback Terry Jordan changing up on the line. Has about 10 seconds left on the play clock. Pass for our incomplete through his hand. Covering on the play, Mitch Jordan and Marlon Williams also in on the stop. He had our open for first down yardage. Terry Jordan just a little bit too tall. It looked that time like he felt there was more pressure than there actually was. His offensive line gave him pretty good protection, but after the scrambling both guys have had to do in this ball game already, Steve, it's understandable when they're a little hesitant about staying back in that pocket too long. Kilpatrick, you saw what he did on his first punt, a 52-yarder, has Jimmy Lincoln to kick to this time around. This one takes a state bounce, a very big state bounce. Lincoln got away from it and it rolls to the nine yard line. It's a 46 yard punt for Tim Kilpatrick. To the sideline we go and Mike Hogwood. Steve, Eddie Goins will be back in the game for uh, NC State. He has a bruised thigh muscle. They put some heat on it and have uh, rubbed some of the liniment on there and he's feeling a lot better, says he should be back next series. Eddie Goins, valuable part of that NC State offense. Caught nine passes against North Carolina a week ago. Dorsey Levins is back into the ball game. We're actually in for his first tour of duty. He's a transfer from Notre Dame. First and ten, Georgia Tech from their own nine. Levins, great speed, brought down by Mike Reed and Ricky Turner at the 22-yard line. Nice gain of about 12 yards on the play. Dorsey Levins out of Syracuse has a small bone broken in his left hand, and you can see that padding on there. It's like a foam splint. They're trying to avoid the hand being pushed back. And Dorsey is expected to give it a go as much as he can withstand the pain. He's lined up as a receiver this time out with Rodriguez and Rules being the handoff goes straight ahead. Not much there. A late flag thrown into the pile. We might have a little extracurricular activity after the whistle. Tyler Lawrence on the stop for NC State and the personal foul call against the Wolfpack not the mistake you want to make when you've got a team bottled up. Dick Sheridan saying, who did it? Dead ball foul, personal foul on the defense, 15 yards, first down. I thought I, reading the lips of the official over there, I think he said number 20, Dwayne Washington, for a little late extra hit. And you could see the, the look from Coach Sheridan saying, we don't need that, guys. North Carolina State leads the ACC in penalty yards this far in the early part of the season. John Jones drills the receiver, that is Papashek. Completed the 49-yard line, an 11-yard gain, good for the first down. His seventh reception on the year. I watched this young man play high school ball up in Cleveland, Ohio. As you see, Florida State has the early advantage against Miami. Pa Papashek played some tight end in high school, but basically he was a linebacker. That's why he was recruited as a linebacker, but during spring ball, they were impressed 
not only with his ability to catch the ball, but the fact that he was a good blocker. And Bill Lewis said, I've got some good young inside linebackers. Let's see if this kid can stick for us as a tight end. And now he's in the starting role. He's caught two today, had six coming in. The first down, you see he got that time successfully. The irony of, of the Papashek situation, the reason why he did not play tight end in high school was because the young man who was ahead of him is also playing in the ACC down at Duke. So a couple of guys from the same school in the same count. Michael Smith is the fullback. Dorsey Levin's the tailback. He gets the handle. Nice change of direction, and he's on his way. Mike Reed will knock him out at the 22-yard line. But it's a gain of 26 yards on the play for Georgia Tech's Dorsey Levin. And the guy who has been leading the way the Junior College All-American. Watch number 68, Gary Brown, leading the block to seal off the inside, and then Levins, with his vision and his speed, ran away from Dwayne Washington. Mike Reed and Ricky Turner were there to keep him from going to the end zone. First and 10 for NC State. They'll credit Levins with 30 on the carry. Georgia Tech leading here three to nothing and driving. Jones looking for McGill and is intercepted. Sebastian Savage interception in the end zone. The first interception thrown this year by Sean Jones. He thought he threw a perfect ball, but that's why Sebastian Savage has been an all-conference defensive back. Just great positioning. He used his body just to widen McGill's route enough to make the play for the interception. The turnover gives North Carolina State the football at their own 20-yard line, trailing Georgia Tech 3-0. This year, Sean Jones has a guy in the wrong colored uniform come away with an interception. That gives North Carolina State the football back. We wondered when Sebastian Savage would pick one off. He picked the right time to do it, stopping the Georgia Tech drive that at that point featured the running of Dorsey Levins. First and 10. North Carolina State at their own 20. Terry Jordan back. Here's the pitch to Barber, but Peoples is there to foil it. And there's a flag on the play. Kevin Peoples acted as if he was in the NC State huddle that time. But North Carolina State will get some yardage out of this because of the face mask. And because it took place behind the line of scrimmage, not only will they lose the loss, they'll get a five-yard walk-off and play the down over. It five-yard face mask penalty against the defense repeat first down from second and 15 or more to first and five big penalty five yarder turned into a 10 yarder right there first and five jordan hands off to barber again barber has the first down it's up over the 33 yard line marlon williams is in there for the stop along with mike williams for georgia tech Coleman Rudolph, I, I just love watching that young man, even when he's not involved in a play. He might be the most active defensive tackle speed-wise that I've seen. I mean, he's running all over this field like he's a linebacker. He's 270 pounds. Actually, he and Richard Kinsey make uh, quite a combination of those defensive tackle spots. First and 10 for North Carolina State. Anthony Barber again. Some big yardage up over the 40-yard line, close to the 41. Mike Williams in on the tackle along with Eric Fry. Barber, who has the highest yards, or actually average yards per carry in the ACC with the carry. And of course, next week we'll be in Tallahassee, North Carolina, taking on Florida State. Bobby Bowden's team, as you saw, leading Miami at an early break down in the Orange Bowl. There's Barber, and what he's done today, he's averaging about six yards a carry during the regular season. Second and one, Maynard. Close to the first down, looks like he's got it. Kimsey in on the tackle with the battle. Greg Maynard was slowed by an ankle injury a week ago. 
you look at battle, there's Maynard. Maynard takes over a lot of the short yardage duties now that Gary Downs is hobbled by his ankle injury. Maynard with a nice average of four yards to tote. He's just 50 yards shy of his total for all of 91. We're just at the halfway mark of the season. Jordan upstairs to Auer. Tipped and he still got it. Mike Williams brings him down to the 35-yard line. Great concentration by Neil Auer, the tight end. Now we talked when NC State played Florida State, the comments of the Seminole coaches that Neil Auer is the athlete at tight end. Might not have the size of some tight ends, but has the athletic ability and the football sense to be in the right spot at the right time. 20-yard reception for Neil Auer, first and 10, North Carolina State at the Georgia Tech 35. Georgia Tech. Barber gets caught behind his own blocker. And gets flattened there by Marlon Williams, who finishes him off for no game. Marlon Williams is listed as an outside linebacker, but he is really strong safety size at just under 210 pounds. In fact, he played some strong safety a year ago. A guy who you have to rely on his quickness and his maneuverability to make tackles because he's going to give up some poundage to some people and take some poundings when he has to handle one of the offensive linemen pull him to the corner. Second and a long nine for North Carolina State. Lawrence, Goins, and Griffiths, the three wide receivers. Pass goes to Lawrence at the 30. And Lawrence is marked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. It will be a gain of 13. Good enough for the first down. Lethon Flowers makes the tackle for Georgia Tech. Reggie Lawrence, the quickest of the wide receivers for NC State, an All-American in track. And you can see the respect his speed provides. Lethon Flowers had a large cushion, so Lawrence could take a four-yard pass and turn it into plus 10 yardage and get a first down. This is what the Wolfpack has done this season. It makes them hard to defend. They are balanced both toward the run and the pass. This man through, and that's going to be Barber, and there's not much there for him. Gets close to the 21-yard line. Pickup of about two. Elliot Fortune, a freshman from Roosevelt, New York, who's getting some duty at nose guard behind Kevin Battle in on the tackle. You know, Coleman Rudolph was the guy who made first contact to disrupt that play. They're moving Rudolph all around on the line. They are trying to line him up more against Eric Taylor, who is more his size than Hagem in the big right tackle. Second down and nine. Jordan lets one go to Lawrence, complete. And Lawrence is drilled at the 16-yard line, a gain of about five. Eric Fry was the man who made sure the progress stopped there. Well, one of the reasons why Terry Jordan has been successful the last two weeks is because he's been willing to take what the defense gives him. The zones had rolled back. It allowed Lawrence, the underneath guy, to set free there along the sidelines, and then you hope that Reggie's speed and elusiveness can get you the yardage. You got half of it. Rain starting to fall here in Atlanta. It's threatened all morning. Third down and four. North Carolina State trailing 3-0. They're at the 16 of Georgia Tech. Jordan to throw. Our complete. And he's down to the 12, and he's got the first down. Eric Fry with the tackle. A second effort by Neil Auer. Got him first down yardage. Six foot five, 245 pound, one time quarterback, Neil Auer, able to keep his balance after the first pop from Eric Fry. That got that final yard to get the first down for one of the Wolfpack co captains. First and 10 at the Georgia Tech 11. Deepest penetration by the Wolfpack all afternoon. Maynard inside the 10. Three hard yards down to the eight. Fry in on the tackle, along with Kevin Battle. I mean to tell you, there was some head knocking between Maynard, Fry, and Battle on that one. Battle of 310 pounds didn't go down like Fry and Maynard did. <laughs> I wonder why. But he felt it just as much as the other two. There's something about a landmass. Jordan's been most efficient today. 12 for 14, 105 yards going into this play. Second and eight from the nine. Marlon Williams drills Anthony Barber for a 
three-yard loss back to the 11. Well, here's a guy who had 11 sacks coming into this season, and this is how he usually does the work in the backfield. He just outruns the blocking scheme on the line of scrimmage. He can line up wide and just beat the ball carrier to the spot. Third down, 10 yards to go. North Carolina State trying to pull off points in the scoring zone and go for the corner to Hinton. Touchdown, North Carolina State. Curly Day, who was in the ball game, battling a hamstring pull, was the underneath man along with Mike Williams, the safety. They run a perfect flag route to Robert Hinton. And Hinton is just able to get down inbounds. As soon as that foot hit and barely hit, boy, he sailed a long way in the air before he could get that foot down in time. Careful call by the official. 11-yard touchdown pass, the third offering of the season for Terry Jordan. Steve Vinatick for the point after. And North Carolina State, as the rain starts to fall here in Atlanta, takes the lead here, 7-3. Terry Jordan reacts to this touchdown strike to Robert Hinton. July 1992, Oldsmobile goes further than any other car company to redefine quality. Further than the lab, further than the test track, the Oldsmobile Achiever went 100,000 miles against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in a real... Mike Hogwood has started a trend and so are the Ducks. But it's raining and it's not expected to let up all afternoon. We've been kind of waiting for it and it's arrived just before halftime here. How it will affect this ball game? I would expect both teams would probably try to put a lot of stock in their ground game from here on out, but we'll see. First and ten, North Carolina State at their own 30. 4.16 left to go in the first half. Harry Jordan looking for Ryan Schultz, covered there by Lethon Flowers. A little too tall for Schultz out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Flowers, the second-year man. Well, for NC State right now, they want to run some clock down, get a few first downs, gain the field position advantage again. For Georgia Tech, they need to make this a three and out situation. Give their offense another crack at getting on the board again in this first half. And, of course, North Carolina State deferred the opening coin toss. They'll get the ball to start the second half. Here's Barber. Barber gets outside. And he is brought down. After the first down at the 43-yard line. Good block by Greg Maynard and Ray Griffiths to allow Anthony Barber to turn the corner. Watch number 33. The fullback will lead the play for Barber. He'll take care of the linebacker, and then Griffiths on the outside does the block on Curly Day. It's a gain of 13. Moves the chains, first and 10 at the North Carolina State 42-yard line. Both teams have all of their timeouts. The screen to Goins is going nowhere. Georgia Tech has it solved in a hurry. Tom Johnson and Eric Fry make the stop. Haven't called Tom Johnson's name too much, but he's been instrumental in the first part of the season as you look at Eric Fry. Fry, who did not start the ball game. Jamal Cox got the nod, but Fry has seen increasing action as this game has gone on. Johnson smelled the third time they've tried that fold screen, and they were ready for it. Aubrey Shaw is into the backfield now for North Carolina State. This is a situation where they kind of missed Liddell George. All purpose back. Jordan on the screen, complete to Maynard. Maynard keeps his feet and struggles to the 47-yard line. It's a five-yard gain. NC State would be three or actually five yards short. Fry and Williams on the tackle. That's Mike Williams. Pressured by Tom Johnson, Terry Jordan had to look to an alternate receiver, and Greg Maynard, who has not caught all that many balls this year, was able to get the catch and some yardage. The field will get slippery right now, and footing will be interesting as this game goes on. Third, and a long five. NC State leading 7-3. Pass is incomplete, tipped once. Tipped first by Mike Williams, intended for Eddie Goins. 
Boy, Mike Williams had a perfect read on the ball by Terry Jordan. That's why coaches always tell players, extend your hands, catch the ball away from your body. Goins trying to run a little turn-in route, and watch Williams step right up. But see how he tried to cradle that ball up against his chest, banged off the shoulder pads. If he reaches for the ball, if it slides through his hands, he still has a chance to trap it up against his body. Tim Kilpatrick for his third punt of the day. Jimmy Lincoln set to receive back at his own 15-yard line. Kilpatrick hangs one up, flags fly. Carlos Pruitt was too close to Jimmy Lincoln. How He's did he catch that ball? That's incredible. A 32-yard punt by Kilpatrick, but Pruitt was on him as he caught it. That's amazing. Somehow Jimmy Lincoln was able to stay with that ball as Carlos Pruitt nailed him. Not like the Canadian Football League where you have to give five yards, but it'll be a five-yard penalty on the interference on the attempt to catch the punt. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Umbrellas, the order of the day. In the two-yard zone, five-yard penalty against the kicking team. First down, Boy, Bill, offense. Bill, Bill Lewis is really hot as he thought that should have been a 15-yard penalty. Next week, we'll be in Tallahassee. High noon on many of these same stations. The North Carolina Tar Heels taking on the Seminoles of Florida State in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. Hope you can be with us Saturday, October 10th. This one's a good one. North Carolina State leading Georgia Tech 7-3. 2.33 left to go in the first quarter, first half. Georgia Tech with a full complement of timeouts. John Jones in a steady rain to throw. And it is going to be incomplete. Trapped by Lincoln. That'll stop the clock with 227 left. NC State playing the freshman, the true freshman, Mike Harrison out of Camden, New Jersey a lot because of the early injury to John Akins. But Harrison certainly gives them a lot more quickness on that defensive front. Georgia Tech can score in a hurry. And the modus operandi ever since Sean Jones has taken over the helmet quarterback. Jones on the option. The pitch to Lincoln. Gets outside. Mike Reed hauls him down. Two yards shy of the first down at the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight. Block rolling with 2.14 left. Mike Reed is one of the best open field tacklers in the conference. If he does not make the stop on Jimmy Lincoln here, Georgia Tech not only has the first down, they have a lot more because there are not many other white shirts there. Most of the rest of the group had Georgia Tech men lined up against him. But he stops the ball carrier shy of the first down, and Georgia Tech calls a timeout here to decide what they want to do on third and along two. They have two timeouts remaining. 2.12 left to go on the clock here in the first half of play. Bill Lewis, there you see him in the center. In front of him, redshirt freshman quarterback Donnie Davis out of Burlington, North Carolina. The quarterback of the future, very obviously, because another senior, Jeff Howard, is also a quarterback behind Sean Jones. So with those two guys gone, it will be Davis's show next year. Play getting set to come back as you look at the now wet skyline of Atlanta and the mascot buzz in the end zone. There's the timeout summary. Well, Georgia Tech knows that points on this drive are crucial. They'd love to make it 7-6 to six with three points from Sisson, but more importantly, 10-7, because as the weather fades, the team ahead will have a greater and greater advantage. Second time in the option, opposite side of the field. Lincoln is greeted by Sebastian Savage. And he's going to have the first down at the 38-yard line. What a pop by Sebastian Savage, the senior cornerback out of Carlisle, South Carolina. Watch this hit. He fights off the block of Rodriguez and catches Jimmy Lincoln. First and ten. Here's Jeff Wright. Quick opener up over the 50-yard line to the 47. Ricky Turner on 
the tackle. It's a gain of about 15. Good play called by Steve Shankweiler, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, surprising them with the first down draw play. 148 left to go. Clock now moving once again. Sean Jones looking and throws it incomplete through the hands of Jeff Wright. That'll stop the clock with a minute 41 left to go in the first half. He was looking for Anthony Rice's tight end going across the middle of the field, and he got tangled up with the umpire, and then Rice got popped by one of the Wolfpack defenders, and he hobbles off the field. Now, Papashek left earlier with a little bit of a shoulder problem, and so Todd Vance, the third tight end, is now in the ball game. Three wide receivers for Georgia Tech on second down and 10 at the 47. That's Rodriguez in motion. Jones, incomplete intended for Jimmy Lincoln, and Allen Johnson was covering on the play as the nickelback. Now that ball will get slicker and slicker. And Allen Johnson, he had a great opportunity there. Scott Sisson, who is it? So many field goals in his career, 48 of them to be precise for the Yellow Jackets. He's made one and missed one this afternoon. His longest, of course, 51 yards. They're not in his zone yet. A minute 36 to go, third and 10. Georgia Tech trailing 7-3. The fake, Jones looking for Walker. Incomplete and they were working on Allen Johnson once again. That's six points. That is six points. Keenan Walker, the junior out of College Park, Georgia, running the crossing route, has a step on Johnson and Sean Jones delivers a beauty. Johnson may have just gotten a piece of it. He's got a hand in the way to interfere with Walker's field division. Jason Bender, his brother Jeff, twin brother, quarterback for NC State, punts it away for Georgia Tech. Ricky Turner will get away from this one as it rolls into the end zone for a touchback. And with a minute 22 left to go in the first half of play, North Carolina State's defense is held and they'll get the ball back at the 20-yard line to the 47-yard punt by Jason Bender. Because they have the football to start the second half, NC State might be a little more conservative here. Georgia Tech does have the two timeouts left and may try and use them if they recognize that the Wolfpack is just trying to run the clock out. Dallas Dickerson and Aubrey Shaw in the backfield. This is Shaw. Follows Dickerson's block, but Jamal Cox steps inside and brings him down at the 22-yard line. It's a gain of two. Boyd Andrews also in on the tackle for Georgia Tech. 65 seconds to play. Now let's see what Georgia Tech does. If it gets to third and long, see if they call a timeout after this play. Under a minute. Second down and eight. Jordan gives to Aubrey Shaw. Shaw has the first down. David Hendricks brings him down at the 36-yard line, a gain of 14. And now the timeout situation changes. Now NC State will be the team to employ the timeouts because now they are out far enough in their own territory to think about moving downfield and see if they can come away with some points before the half comes to a close. And they've just used one. They will use one right here with the ball at the 36-yard line. Two timeouts remaining, 44 seconds left to go here in the first half. With the weather situation being forecast to get worse as this game goes on, you get to the point where you say to yourself, I want to get as many points early in this game as I can, and then if the monsoon hits, then I don't have to worry. I just have to hold on. So NC State now figuring, hey, if we can come away with three points or a touchdown here before the half, get the second half kickoff and maybe go down and get some more points, I'm going to make it very difficult on that guy and his football team. Bill Lewis knows that, so he's got to figure out something defensively to keep Dick Sheridan's Wolfpack from increasing this four-point advantage. The Wolfpack looking at a first and ten with 44 seconds remaining in the first half. They have two timeouts remaining and they have a 7-3 lead as Dick Sheridan looks on. And 
Coleman Rudolph is ready on the Georgia Tech side of the line of scrimmage. Jordan to throw. Johnson was blitzing. Here's Gorn. Headed for the sidelines. And is knocked out of bounds at the Georgia Tech 41-yard line. I mean to tell you, Ray Griffiths knocks Curly Day into the middle of next week. Watch the block on the left side of your screen. Boom. Oh. It ends up being a two-man block as Kevin Peoples went over the carnage that was left there. What a hit. What a hit. 23 yards downfield for Eddie Goins at the Georgia Tech 41. 35 seconds remaining in the first half. Jordan throws to Shaw complete, wrestled down by Marlon Williams. It's only a two-yard gain and the clock is still rolling. North Carolina State finally calls time. Well, that was a big-time open field tackle by Marlon Williams because there was some running room for Gary Downs. You're not quite into Vitititz's range yet. He's booted one of 46. Right now, you're talking about a 56-yard field goal, so you are going to need at least 10 more and probably in these conditions, Steve, maybe 20 more yards to feel like you're close enough to try the field goal. Wind is kind of swirling and almost looks like it's going to be coming at his face in that end zone right now. It's an easterly breeze at about 10 miles an hour. North Carolina State, Georgia Tech battles have tended to evolve or revolve around one possession, maybe one turnover. We have had one turnover so far in the game. The flags on the goalposts aren't moving, probably in part because they're saturated, <laughs> but also in this bowl because the field sits down in the area, pretty well protected by the buildings around the stadium here at Bobby Dodd Stadium at Grand Field. And the grandstands on both sides as well. Second down and eight. All at the Georgia Tech 39 yard line. Aubrey Shaw, Anthony Barber, the setbacks for Terry Jordan. Big rushes on. Jordan's drilled by Coleman Rudolph. The pass is complete for a first down to Ray Griffiths at the 26. They are now within Vitatix's range. 20 seconds to go. Clock will only start once the chains are set. Now it is underway. And Jordan will down the ball to stop the clock with 15 seconds and one timeout remaining. With the one timeout remaining, you can run any play in your playbook here. You have to decide, do we want to try and go for the end zone or do we want to do a running play and better set the field? They are on the right hash mark now as you look at Vitatic. He's already been on for a point after. He's hit three of his six kicks. And then 40 yards plus. The pass complete to Ryan Schultz. Schultz cannot get out of bounds at the 21-yard line. The clock now stops with seven seconds remaining. Boyd Andrews is in on the tackle. And NC State has called their final timeout. They get their kick unit on the field. So Vitatic will come on. Well, the second down draw play that got good yardage, and then the pass to Eddie Goins with the crushing block by Ray Griffiths, looming as the two big moments in this drive to give NC State a chance to go up by a touchdown here as we come to the close of the first half. The out of the hold of Tim Kilpatrick. This will be a 37-yard, 38-yard kick. And if you noticed on that shot we had a moment ago of the NC State kicker, Steve was down there trying to change the grain a little bit on the carpet. When it gets wet, it gets slicker. So he was roughing up the nap a little bit so he'd have a good step when he puts his plant foot down. Good footing. On the right hash mark. He's got enough legs. It's good. And North Carolina State leads by seven. 
with three seconds remaining here in the first half on Steve Vinitik's 38-yard field goal. Two long, impressive drives by NC State, both times from their own 20-yard line. They've marched down the field and come away with points. Terry Jordan, after an inconsistent first period, has been very solid here in the second 15 minutes. Very solid indeed, and they haven't had to really get an awful lot of run support to make this happen. So Jordan has found Goins. He's had some key catches by people like Robert Hinton. I think the Robert Hinton pass reception in the first quarter kind of set reset Terry's thinking and got his confidence back and he's been very very solid since then and of course Hinton was the guy who caught the touchdown pass in the far corner of the end zone so we're getting set for Jimmy Siskai's kickoff with three seconds remaining here in the first half the last thing NC State of course wants is for its special teams to yield a long run for a touchdown and then it can go to the locker room and think things over and Look forward to getting the ball for the start of the second half. I think they told Jimmy, if this ball is anything more than 8 or 10 feet in the air, just keep running right out of the stadium. Without <laughs> the end of that bus, and wait for us. Just whack this on the ground, right like that. This guy, taken by Michael Smith, he downs it at the 33-yard line. There are two seconds remaining here in the first half, so Georgia Tech will get one last crack at it and they will be 66 yards away. It's a smart play by Michael Smith because now you can at least line up and let it fly and maybe get an interference penalty or a, a breakdown and come away with a score. You can see what NC State is doing. Ricky Turner is all the way down to his own 30-yard line. Now he's moving up a little bit, but they have eight people at least 10 yards off the ball. Only a three-man rush on Sean Jones this time around. And to go with a draw play to Jeff Wright. And Wright will be tackled at the 44-yard line as the first half comes to a close. A successful first half for NC State. They fall behind 3 to nothing, but come back with a touchdown by Robert Hinton and a field goal by Steve Vitatic with three seconds remaining here in the first half to take the lead 10 to 3. And standing by with Coach Dick Sheridan is Mike Hogwood. First question, Coach, the weather. What do you, you think is going to happen here in the second half? Are you going to change your game plan any because it's going to get real wet out here? Well, it looks like it is. Uh, we certainly had a lot of practice in August in, in the wet weather, so, uh, you know, it's uh, just which team adjust to it the best. I, I think some of the things you've got to continue to try and do. Let's hope the ball boys keep the balls dry. What about the first half? Well, uh, you know, it's a hard-fought game. I, you know, we had a hard time slowing them down. They had the ball a lot, and... Uh, you know, it's we, we came up with some big plays when they got down to scoring position, which uh, we've been doing all year. Sebastian Savage had one of the great interceptions of this season. What a key play that was. It was a big play for us. You know, great reaction. You know, he was in pretty good position and then turned, and there, the ball was there and had the great reactions to intercept it. All right. Dick Sheridan, his Wolfpack lead 10-3. We are at halftime at Bobby Dodd Stadium. There's Georgia Tech's success on the ground. There's the pitch. Goes to Jimmy Lincoln as he tries to reverse field and doesn't get much room there. Brought down by Greg Janamore and Mike Harrison. And let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Gentlemen, this is the 100th anniversary of football at Georgia Tech, and we're going to show you some pictures of some key players on the 1952 championship team honored here today. One of them in particular was George Morris, co-captain, great linebacker in the College Football Hall of Fame, down here in the rain with us. Congratulations on being here today. This is a big thrill for I think you had a big contingent. Well, we had a, we got a wonderful contingent. We've got about 30 of our players off the 51-52 football team at Georgia Tech. And, um, of course, we got a little rain today, but that, you know, none of us are going to melt. We just saw Georgia Tech run for a big first down. I know you're having a big reunion tonight and uh, all kinds of fun things. What do you think about Georgia Tech football right now here in 1992? Georgia Tech football is pretty good, really. Um, you know, Bobby Ross um, got us winning a couple of years ago, won the national championship two years ago, and they're playing well. We've got some good football players. We're balanced with a number of other teams. We won a big, big ball game last week made all the alumni happy. Steve? Thank you very much, Mike. 52, pretty good year. National championship at Tech. Jeff Wright got 15 yards. Here's Dorsey Levin. And Levin moves ahead. 
for another 12 or 13 yards out to the 47 yard line Mike Reed hauled him down it's another first down for the Yellow Jackets well Mike Reed was the guy who got whacked on the play by Jeff Wright watch the right side of your screen Jeff Wright just got back in time to avoid the clip and Mike Reed went flying it was Sebastian Savage who finally brought down the ball carrier but again on the ground Georgia Tech moving out towards midfield first and ten at their own 47 yard line Tech score here make this second half most interesting here's the pass it is complete to Vance picks it up at the North Carolina State 44 yard line well, that's another one of the interesting formations that this Georgia Tech offense has. They had two tight ends, two wide receivers, and then they ran the lone running back out of the backfield in motion. Just too many people on the flanks for the defense to cover. And Vance, the second tight end, catches the ball for a gain of almost eight. Second and two. Georgia Tech in both pack territory. Jones to throw, complete to Walker. Dwayne Washington drives him out at the North Carolina State 34-yard line. A gain of 10, picks up the first down. Just seems like the Georgia Tech offense has a little bit more purpose this half than they showed at times in the first 30 minutes of action. Second and short, defense was rolled back a little bit, worrying about the long bomb, and Walker easily open for the little turnout that he made into a bigger game with a good turn up the field. Halfway through, a little more than halfway through the third, as Jimmy Lincoln carries to the short uh, side corner, and he is driven out of bounds for a loss. Carl Reeves, one of the smallest linemen, Division I football, and Greg Janimore in on the tackle. There's Reeves. Says he's tried to bulk up five meals a day. Let me tell you, Carl, try that six that never fails. <laughs> I know what he feels like. I was on a, my senior year, I was on a 7,000 calorie a day diet and gained eight pounds. It's called e a building. Oh, it was five, six meals a day. Second that down. Doesn't work. <laughs> Second down and ten. Sean Jones rushes on. Pass complete to right. Jeff Wright. Gets down into North Carolina State territory at the 22. David Merritt on the tackle. It's a gain of 11. Excellent mix of play calling on this drive for the Yellow Jackets. Second and long, NC State with the pressure. And you see Lawrence blitzing, and you throw the screen right where the linebacker vacated. Good downfield blocking. Mike Reed made the tackle, but not before Georgia Tech picked up another first down. Lock it down to the 21. McGill and Rodriguez are split to the wide side of the field on first and ten. Jones to throw, but flags will stop this one. Jason Dukes, the right tackle, flinched. The redshirt freshman just a little bit anxious at right tackle. An inexperienced offensive line here as you look at Dukes. And that's been a problem, but they've been coming together. Dead ball foul, false start on the offense, five yards, repeat, first down. Interesting collection of offensive Well, players. that's right, you've got Kushan and Milam, our fifth-year seniors who have not played much previously. Brown, the junior college transfer, and then Cheevers and Dukes, our redshirt freshman. Three wide outs for Sean Jones, first and 15 of his own 26. Deep handoff, Jeff Wright. Wright cuts inside, gets to the 20. Down to the 19, Damian Covington flattens him with help from Dwayne Washington. It's a gain of six. Well, you see Jeff Wright starting to feel comfortable again with playing football. He was counted on to be a big performer last year for Georgia Tech and unfortunately broke his ankle in preseason. The running game really suffered last year in terms of experience with Wright and William Bell out of the action. Georgia Tech moving in. Second and eight, Jones will keep. And Jones goes down in the grasp of Ricky Logo at the 16. It'll be a gain of three and brings up third and five. Well, that quarterback draw is such timing. And Ricky Logo, the nose guard, his responsibility there was check draw, check screen. And he stayed at home and kept Sean Jones from making that a bigger play. Because I tell you what, if Logo is not there, that gain is not three yards, it's 10, maybe a touchdown. As the linebackers are spread out with the formation. Third down and five. Georgia Tech trailing here, 10-3. Jones, pass complete, Papasek, touchdown! Great read by that guy right there, Sean Jones. It was an all-out blitz. They left Papasek, the tight end alone, and the sophomore out of 
Strongsville, Ohio, waltzes into the end zone. See everybody coming? And Papasek is all alone. Ricky Turner is there too late. Here they come. You can see Covington. You can see Lawrence. You can see Merritt. And Sean Jones read it, found the hot receiver, and we've got ourselves a new ball game. Second touchdown pass or catch of the year by Papashak. Here's Scott Sisson for the point after. And it is tied up at 10 apiece. Papashak with his third pass reception of the afternoon. It's a score. 437 left in the third. It's all tied up. Let's pause for a word from your local station. Quarter. 10 on Papashak's catch of a Sean Jones touchdown pass of 16 yards. Tied up at 10, Jeff Papashak. Sean Jones after going 5 for 15 in the latter part of the first quarter and the second quarter had a perfect drive that time for Georgia Tech. Anthony Barber waits for the kick of Scott Sisson at the goal line. Turns it out over the 22 to the 23 yard line. David Hendricks in on the special teams tackle. And so North Carolina State takes the field once again as you watch David Hendricks leave the field. Hendricks was one of those young freshmen who stepped in last year with the injuries to Wright and Bell and played very, very well. He was running back. Jimmy Lincoln, of course, used that as a springboard to the ACC Rookie of the Year award. First and 10, North Carolina State in their own 24. Alone setback. Lawrence and Griffiths are split wide out to the wide side of the field. Here's Bender rolling that way. Pressure is on by Battle. It is incomplete. Intended back there for Ray Griffiths, but Bender was hit by Battle as he let it go. Mike G is hurting, and he is headed to the sidelines. Offensive lineman for the Wolfpack. G was the lead blocker on the bootleg and it looked like he got a leg caught under one of the Georgia Tech rushers and twisted something. Boy, they're trying to raise the noise level here at Bobby Dodd Stadium. A lot of these fans are out in the parking lot right now trying to hide from this rain. Second down and ten. The play clock expires. Well, they called the timeout just before it expired. So NC State has to burn one. And the way this game is going, the closeness tells you that that might be a costly timeout for the Wolfpack to take. We've got a break in the action at Bobby Dodd Stadium with a score tied at 10. That offensive line feeling the heat. Mike G is back into that offensive line. A third down, 14. Score tied at 10. NC State working from its own 19. Big rush on Bender again. Flag goes into the fray. Bender goes down at the 18-yard line. Marlon Williams flattened him. The flag is going to be a hold against the Wolfpack. Uh, Freddie Coger, sophomore linebacker, number 41, is taken down on the play right there. As he went flying by and Bender trying to do all he could to get away from the pressure. Georgia Tech will decline the penalty. Tim Kilpatrick will come on to punt it away for North Carolina State. So the momentum has swung in favor of Georgia Tech. First, their defense stops as Vitek misses the field goal attempt. Then the offense rolls down the field. Papashak scores the touchdown. Their defense has made a stand here. They'll show 10 men on the line of scrimmage for Kilpatrick to look at as he punts this away. And they're coming. Kilpatrick gets out of beauty. Lincoln at his own 35. Cuts up field and is pushed out of bounds at the 41-yard line. A 48-yard punt from Tim Kilpatrick. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hawkwood. Two injury notes for NC State. Mike Reed.
has turf toe. He sat out the last series, but they have taped it up, and he is back in there now. Terry Jordan, not so fortunate. They tried that new shoe. It did not work. He went off the field in crutches. Uh, he is being x-rayed right now. Tough loss for North Carolina State. Terry Jordan was leading his ball club, doing a very nice job converting big third down passes. Sean Jones back in command. Dorsey Levins tries to hit the corner. He is hit by Sebastian Savage, David Merritt. Dick Sheridan knows right now for his NC State club with under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. They're losing the momentum battle. They're losing the field position battle. His defense has to come up with some kind of big play here, much like they did in the first half with the Savage interception. For Georgia Tech, they feel if they can go down and score on this drive, it's their football game. Second down. And off Michael Smith. Smith in NC State territory for the first down at the 47. David Merritt in on the stop. The gain is going to be 11 yards. They came into this game with the intention of improving their ground game. Georgia Tech has been very impressive in the way they have grounded out through the infantry. They're up over 150 yards on the afternoon. Jeff White was the setback. The play fake to him, and Carl Reeves has Sean Jones down. Ball is loose. Who's going to get it? NC State says they have it. Well, it depends on what happens in the pulling and pushing and shoving at the bottom of the pile. Sean Jones was trying to collect it to his hip as the ball bounced free. NC State takes over. Keep battle. Watch the play. Carl Reeves strips the ball from... Sean Jones. Sean tries to draw it into his body, but then Reeves actually, with his right hand, reached through and poked the ball loose again, and Keith Battle was the next Wolfpack on the scene, and he came away with the ball. Second turnover for Georgia Tech this afternoon. The Wolfpack has the ball at the 38-yard line. What I said just a few moments ago, they needed to make a big play on defense. Let's see what they do now with the young quarterback, Bender. Score tied at 10. Bender to Greg Maynard. Maynard pulls over Leaf on Flowers and is pulled down by Kevin Peoples inside the 20-yard line at the 17. It's a gain of 21 yards on the play by the big fullback. A real advantage for the offense now, as you can see the the glaze on this field from the water that has been falling for most of the game. The offense knows where it's going, so they generally will have the better footage. And when you're 240 pounds like Greg Maynard, straight ahead is the best way to go. First and down, first and ten of the 17. Barber headed to the corner. And it's knocked out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. It'll be a gain of three. As we wind down time here in the third quarter, a minute 49 remaining. NC State moving in for the score, trying to take advantage of this turnover. An artificial turf, you avoid the problem of mud and very slippery conditions, but when you have enough rain like we've had here, Steve, it starts to settle on top of the carpet. There's just no place for it to evaporate to. Second down and seven. Lawrence in motion. Bender gives to Barber. Barber snared down by Kevin Peoples at the 14, no game. Big, big tackle by Kevin Peoples. Anthony Barber accelerating to the outside. If he gets by Peoples, he's got the corner turned. Just couldn't get that stiff arm onto the helmet of Peoples soon enough, and Kevin with the ankle tackle and a big one. That'll bring down third down and seven. Score tied at 10 apiece, a minute 19 remaining in the third. Watch Goins coming underneath the coverage from the right of Bender. He split out to the short side of the field. Big rush is on. It's incomplete to Goins. All out blitz for Georgia Tech. They, wa 
They wanted to go the safe way, Steve, going to Eddie Goins, hope, hoping that he could make the catch and get the first down yardage. But right now, that Georgia Tech defense in long yardage situations is just flying at Bender. And Steve Vinatick is on. The junior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, has kicked three times, missed two. The one he hit was his longest of the day, 38. This will be a 31-yard kick out of the hold of Tim Kilpatrick. It's long enough, and it is good enough. And North Carolina State steps back out in front, 13 to 10, with 102 left to go in the third quarter of play. Well, NC State regains the lead. Georgia Tech can take some solace in that they limited them to the field goal, so a touchdown could still put them back in control of this game. But that NC State defense, and Dick Sheridan knows, they're the key to the game right now. He just can't count on his offense scoring a lot of points the rest of the way. After losing Jordan, going with Bender in these conditions, although Jeff led NC State to a victory at Raleigh last year against Georgia Tech when Terry Jordan was out with a broken arm. They're going to have to hope that he can just maintain right now. North Carolina State has started fast previously. They are 4-1 right now. They're hoping to keep the momentum. They've always they've had a habit of slow finishes. As you can see, this graphic suggests this is what they've got remaining. Texas Tech at home next week at Virginia Tech. It won't be easy. They have Clemson at home. A major task in Virginia. But Duke and Wake Forest on the home stretch. So things may be happening in the right fashion for North Carolina State. But today a win would be most important to them. To say the least of what it would do to their conference champions. This guy with a kick that is taken by Tisdale at the five. Tisdale, flat. By number 59, John Whistler from Sarasota, Florida. 19-yard return. And Georgia Tech will take over. Georgia Tech had good success running the football on their touchdown drive in this quarter. They coughed up the fumble on the sack by Carl Reeves. They go back to their two-back set, figuring they're going to run the ball here on first down. First and 10, 24. It goes to Jimmy Lincoln. Dances through the hole and gets ahead to the 28-yard line. Keith Battle in on the tackle, a gain of four. This time, one winds down here in the third. Again, in, NC State's defense is trying to make it a three-and-out situation. Georgia Tech, with the advantage they figure in the quarterback situation right now, wants to at least regain control of field position as this quarter comes to an end. 13 to 10, North Carolina State in the lead. Here's Lincoln again, and he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Damian Covington and Carl Reeves at the 27-yard line. It's going to be a loss of one. Reeves has had a wonderful game for NC State using his quickness. He forced the fumble earlier. That time he again made the quick step around the bigger man on that offensive front of Georgia Tech. Jason Dukes, the redshirt freshman, is a 300 pounder but he can't handle right now the quickness of Carl Reeves time has run out on the third quarter of play North Carolina State takes the lead on a 31 year old field 31 yard field goal by Steve Vinitson right now North Carolina State treating it as their own leading 13 to 10 on Steve Vinitick's 31 yard field goal the final minute of play here in the third we start the fourth quarter Steve Martin here at Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood in soggy Atlanta third down six coming up for Georgia Tech. They're at their own 28. Sean Jones. <laughs> Trying to find Bobby Rodriguez. Sebastian Savage is covering on the play and that'll bring the punt unit on. Bobby Jones or Bobby Rodriguez took a long time to get open and Sean Jones gave him as much time as he could and then the slippery ball denied him the chance to make the completion. The deep curl route, and you see at the feet of Rodriguez, he had position on Sebastian Savage, but Sean Jones couldn't make the connection. Jason Bender, twin brother of Jeff Bender. Getting ready to punt it away to Ricky Turner. Turner, flat, 
soon as he got the ball at the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Mike Williams. It's a 33-yard line drive. Knuckler with no return. Next week, from Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, it'll be North Carolina taking on Florida State. And you'll see it on many of these same stations at 12 noon. Jeff Bender back on, quarterback for the Wolfpack. Barber and Maine are his setbacks. Bender throwing for the sideline. It is complete to Ray Griffiths. How he caught that, I'll never know. It's complete to the 45-yard line, a gain of five. Curly Day can't believe it. Ray Griffiths is able to get the hands underneath. Good call. Well, the nose might have been rubbing against the carpet. That's our little secret, I think. I don't think any way anybody but us on that camera shot could have seen that. Mike, I tell you what, the way he has blocked today, he deserves to have a catch. Mike Davenport and Adrian Hill, the wide outs. Second down and five. Maynard gets the handoff in the first down. Battle has to track him down from behind, along with Mike Williams. And it's in Georgia Tech territory at the 43-yard line. Coleman Rudolph nearly gets to Bender before he could get the ball, and Maynard had to juggle that handoff. It was really more of a little flip by Bender to Greg Maynard, who now leaves the field hobbling after the first down yardage. Coleman Rudolph came flying through there. Jeff Bender was lucky to get that handoff. Haven't seen Eddie Goins in the last three rotations of wide receiver. Robert Hinton is in there now. He's in motion on first and ten. Anthony Barber. Kevin Battle brings him down at the 40-yard line, a gain of three. Similar scenario that we had earlier in the ball game for the NC State defense. Georgia Tech now has to come up with some kind of big play. Force a turnover. Or at worst, make NC State settle for a field goal to stay within a touchdown. Goins is back in the ball game. Ray Griffiths is split wide to the bottom side. Goins to the top on second and seven. Rudolph rushes Bender and makes him hurry his throw to Eddie Goins. Tom Johnson was also in the vicinity as well. It'll bring up third down. Uh, you know that everybody is coming this time for Georgia Tech, so don't be surprised to see NC State try and run some kind of draw action or quick pass to try and negate what you know is going to be open the gates, here they come from Georgia Tech. Dallas Dickerson and Aubrey Shaw, the setbacks for Jeff Bender on third and seven. NC State leading by three. Big rush is on. Pass is complete to Dallas Dickerson at the 40, 35 yard line of Georgia Tech. He's going to be shy of the first down by two yards. Dallas Dickerson. Rodney Wilkerson comes in to make the tackle. And the tackle was made by it's Rodney a solid Wilkerson. two yards. The choice from Dick Sheridan is to punt away the football. Give your defense field position. At worst, the ball's on the 20-yard line. If you get a good pooch punt from Tim Kilpatrick, you'll have them bottled up deeper than that. Rain has let up a little bit here. And NC State needs a timeout as the play clock just about expired. I tell you what, I, I think Dick Sheridan wanted the play clock to expire and take the five-yard penalty. Instead, they burned their second timeout. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Ogwood. Guys, we're here with a couple of ladies who are really interested in this game today. It's Hazel Bender and Estelle Bender. This is Jason and Jeff's grandmother and their mother right here. Now, where's dad today? Poor dad had to sit on the other side because we couldn't get enough seats together, so he's over on the state side. Who are you pulling for? Can I ask that? Whoever has the ball. <laughs> what, what do you, fair way to do it. <laughs> what did you think when Jeff got in the game? Well, I was happy he got in the game. You're pretty proud of both of your sons. Oh, we certainly are. We certainly are. We just want them to do whatever they can do out there to help 
the team. Well, Steve and Jack, this is pretty easy up here. The, whoever has the ball, the benders are pulling for them. Well, I think the only thing the Bender family wouldn't want today is a tie. Because then they'd argue about it all winter. And that's right. <laughs> At least with a decision, the guy who won can say, hey, it was my year. Exactly. Fourth down and two, the punting unit is on for our North Carolina State. They're at the 35-yard line. Well, we'll have to wait and see if that timeout comes back to haunt NC State. I really think they would have taken the five-yard penalty. It wouldn't have made that much of a difference in terms of this pooch kick. Yeah, that might have actually given Kilpatrick a little more room to kick it. Fourth down and two, and it's a fake that goes awry. Kilpatrick does all he can to get a kick away. State cannot down it. But what a play by Tim Kilpatrick to salvage a fake punt that went astray. It's a 35-yard kick. It's a touchback. But I'm sure that's not the way Dick Sheridan drew it up. We'll be back. Drama continues between these two who have been no more than a possession apart the last four years, and this afternoon is no different. North Carolina State clinging to a 13-10 lead. Georgia Tech has the football, 5-19 to go. Ball on their own 23-yard line. First and 10. Sean Jones at the control. Jones looks to Rodriguez and throws a one-hopper. Let's take a look at our Schlitz Malt Flicker game summary. North Carolina State, Terry Jordan, left the game with that type of report card. And that injury, a big factor, although Jeff Bender did get them down to get the go-ahead field goal, but three missed field goals this afternoon. And Georgia Tech, after the touchdown drive here in the second half, they've not picked up a first down since. Second down and 10. Sean Jones rushes on. Reeves in his shadow. Ball complete to Papashev. Merritt pulls him down. He's going to be right on that first down marker. Down to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. It's a good thing NC State has some depth at quarterback. Jeff Bender on that last sack bruised his left shoulder. He came off dragging the shoulder. Terry Harvey is loose on the sidelines, but Jeff Bender has convinced the trainer for now that he can go back out there. But uh, for how long, we'll have to wait and see. Papashek leaves the field after making the catch for the first down with the problems on that right side. I don't know if it's his hand or his wrist or the shoulder. We've had a lot of people leave this war. John Aikens is gone for the day. Here's a little flare pass after Rodriguez. Complete. Rodriguez out to the 40-yard line. Fumble the football. Fumble the football. NC State says they've got it. Covington trying to run away with it. Let's see if they blow it you dead. It's going to be Georgia Tech ball. Well, that NC State sideline did their best to try and convince the guys in the striped shirts that that fumble occurred while the action was still going on. Can't see them. Turnovers have played a big role in this ball game. Stopping Georgia Tech twice. One of those turned into an NC State touchdown on a long drive. Second and four for Sean Jones. Incomplete intended for Dorsey Levin. Levin said Spacey easily had the first down and perhaps a lot more. Instead, it is now a third and four. With 4.03 to play, Bill Lewis and his staff have to at least think about this getting to the point of being four down territory, even at their own 39-yard line. They certainly do. North Carolina State has shown that they can move the football on the ground and eat some time. Georgia Tech, third and four, down by three. Jones looks over the middle, complete to McGill. Big first down and more. McGill driven out of bounds. And he goes over the NC State bench. They're going to mark him out at the 43-yard line of North Carolina State. Got a great block on the corner by Jeff Wright. Watch the left side of your screen. McGill slides across and watch Jeff Wright come up here and put the block on David Merritt. That gave Jason McGill another 10 yards of real estate. And when you're down by three, every yard is precious. 
Well, I tell you, this game is so close emotionally. All it takes is one little spark to ignite momentum on either side. Georgia Tech has it rolling now. They're in NC State territory at the 43. Jones guns it into the hands of Keenan Walker. Walker inside the 20, right through the hands of Mike Reed. Mike Reed came up like he was going to blitz. Sean Jones read it and went to the hot receiver, and then Mike Reed nearly picked it off when the blitz was a fake, just out of his reach. And Keenan Walker with an excellent job of getting positive yardage downfield. Walker, the guy who dropped the sheer touchdown pass in the first half, coming up with a big play here in the fourth period. It's the ball inside NC State's 20-yard line to the 17. First and 10. Jones to right. Logo stops him. Paul Reeves there to help finish him off. Loss of three on the play. Keep in mind, if Georgia Tech scores a touchdown here to take the lead, NC State has only one timeout remaining. It'll change. It will change with the clock. Do it. Clock moving with 3.03 left to go. Second down and 13 coming for Georgia Tech. McGill and Lincoln split wide to the wide side of the field. Walker's a short side wide drop. Jones looking at Walker. Hits right instead at the 17-yard line. Dropped immediately there by Ed Gallon and Dwayne Washington. Well, with the excellent pass coverage of the NC State secondary, these final 17 yards are going to be very difficult to come by for Georgia Tech. The touchdown pass to Papashek came in a blitz situation. I don't know if we'll see NC State try that gamble again down in their red zone. Third and 10 at the 17. Georgia Tech trailing by a field goal. Jones running for his life. Battle is there. They both miss. Pass complete to right now. He dropped it in the end zone. Jeff Wright was all alone. What a remarkable effort by Sean Jones to stay alive, and Jeff Wright couldn't hang on to a touchdown. How he gets away, first he outruns Carl Reeves, Keith Battle, Michael Harrison, finds Wright alone, and Jeff turned just before he caught the ball. He was so intent on the end zone, he should have worried about catching the ball first. Sisson is one for two. This one from 35 yards. It's up. Good. Tie ball game. Yes. Scott Sisson ties it up with a 35-yard boot at the 227 mark. The stage is set now as NC State will get the football back on the resulting kickoff. The Yellow Jackets tie it up. Great legs. Thank you. How do you get them? I used to do aerobics till I dropped, then I found Thighmaster. Every single time you squeeze thigh master, you strengthen and tone right where you need it. So it's easy to squeeze, squeeze your way to shapely hips and thighs. I thought I'd never fit into these jeans again. Thank you, thigh master. I recommend it and use it. The secret to shapely thighs is exercising these muscles with just the right resistance. This balance resistance coil is designed to give you results quickly and comfortably. Want to tone your upper chest and arms? Thigh Master will give you excellent results. Thigh Master, we may not have been born with great legs, but now we can look like we were. To order your Thigh Master, call 1 800 533 1400. Have your credit card ready or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.50 for shipping and handling to this address. No CODs, please. If you're not fully satisfied, return it in 30 days for your money back. Plus, if you call right now, we'll also send you Suzanne Slender for Life Plan absolutely free. So call now for quick delivery. Oregon's Overland Express explodes, but Southern Cal deploys a devastating D. It's a Pac 10 power play when the Ducks tackle the Trojans. Next Sunday night on Sports Up. Get in shape. Fine body. Aerobic workouts. Fine body. Burn the calories. Trim down. Fine body. Prime bodies. It's the shape of things to come. Tuesday at 5 on Sports Up. 
Dick Sheridan's football team will have the ball one more time after this kickoff by Scott Sisson. Bill Lewis deciding to go for the field goal and turn the game over to his defense. Hold them for three, maybe get it back one more time. Keep in mind, as Jack pointed out, North Carolina State will have the football with only one timeout remaining in this final 227. Sisson ready to kick. Davenport and Barber are back deep. Barber at the three. And Barber surges ahead to the 26-yard line. A 23-yard return, Greg Morris on the tackle. What happens on this first down play will dictate who uses their timeout first. If NC State makes positive yardage, Georgia Tech won't use a timeout. If it's a negative play or a no gain, you might see Tech stop the clock. Goins, Griffiths, the wide receivers. Passing down for Bender. Bender wants his underneath receiver, Aubrey Shaw. Has him at the 34-yard gain. Jamal Cox on the tackle. The clock continues to run. NC State has missed three field goals here this afternoon. Georgia Tech has dropped two balls that would have been touchdowns. Two minutes left. No huddle for State. Bender steps up, fires a ground ball to Aubrey Shaw. Same pattern. Mitch Jordan covering on the play. Mitch, or Tom Johnson, linebacker, is down. Look at these close ones. North Carolina State 18, 12, and 3 in games decided by seven points or less. Well, these two teams, historically, particularly here in the Dick Sheridan era, have played close football games. It was a 28-21 game a year ago. Tom Johnson, the junior out of Huntsville, Alabama. You want to talk about a young man who excels in a lot of ways. This is a guy who does a little bit of everything for Georgia Tech. He's hurt down there on the field while Jeff Bender talks things over with Dick Sheridan. Bender in the ball game now in relief of Terry Jordan. Well, you have a third down and six situation and the conversation there is, hey, we're going to have to throw the ball or maybe fake him with a draw play or whatever, but we got to do something that's not threatening by that. If we make a mistake, the worst that's going to happen to us, it'll be fourth down and we punt the ball. Bender comes back. Third down and six. Johnson off the field. North Carolina State and Georgia Tech tied. An amazing amount of fans have braved the rain to see players like this. Bender going for it all. He will overthrow Eddie Goins. No flags on the play. Curly Day covering. Bender now 5 for 11. The punting unit comes on, so Bill Lewis's decision to go for the field goal works. And Dick Sheridan made the right call there with the idea, throw the home run ball. If we complete it, we're right down where we need to be to score the winning points. If it gets picked off, that's as good as any punt Tim Kilpatrick will give us. Now he's got to hope this defense can do the job. Georgia Tech hoping Sean Jones and company can provide the last-minute magic again. They will get good field position. Jimmy Lincoln lined up at his own 35. Kilpatrick gets a beauty. Backs Kilpatrick, backs uh, Lincoln to the 29. Lincoln trying to reserve her first field and just won't get lucky enough. It's going to be Mike Moore making the tackle. A 40-yard punt by Kilpatrick. First and 10, Georgia Tech at their own 29-yard line. With a minute 34, the Yellow Jackets in possession of all of their timeouts. And that man can do an awful lot of damage in a minute 34 seconds. And keep in mind, number nine on the sidelines, Scott Sisson. And how many games? Six times in his career, he has won ball games in the closing seconds for Georgia Tech with a field goal. Score tied and Jones back to throw. 
Paul Reeves has him in the grass. Paul is thrown out of bounds to knock to stop the clock with a minute 28 left. There is one time where the smaller size of Carl Reeves hurt him. His quickness got him there again, but he's just not strong enough to yank down Sean Jones. Sean, who goes 200 pounds himself, was able to get enough on this ball in the vicinity of two receivers to avoid the sack. Second down and 10. Three wide receivers, wide side of the field. Jones. Looks upfield for Goolsby, nearly picked off by Sebastian Savage. Savage acted as if he was one of the intended receivers. Well, he had Goolsby short, he had Walker deep, and the ball split the difference between the two, and Sebastian Savage was the closest man to it. See, he peeled off of Brent Goolsby. I think he was trying to throw to Keenan Walker. That stops the clock with 122 left, but brings up third down. So now getting the first becomes a concern once again. Lincoln lines up in a slot. Jason McGill outside him, wide out to the wide side. Score tied at 13. Pass over the middle. Rodriguez incomplete. And the punting unit comes on for Georgia Tech. Now North Carolina State has already pulled the fake punt out of their book. Does Bill Lewis dare pull it out in his own territory? Now I think you, at this point, Steve, the tie, while you don't like the tie in terms of the conference, in terms of bowl considerations much later in the year, the tie looks a whole lot more palatable than the loss. Now North Carolina State stands a chance to get the football back. We have a legal procedure penalty coming up against Georgia Tech that will push Jason Bender back even deeper. Dead ball, illegal procedure, false start, offense, five yards for feet down. One of the things about Jason Bender, he does not get the hang time on his punts that some of the other people in the conference do. So Ricky Turner, if he feels the punt cleanly, should have an opportunity to make a return and could get the Wolf back up near midfield or even into Georgia Tech territory. Bender, line drive. Takes a Georgia Tech bounce and Bender gets the job done, pushing back North Carolina State to their own 34-yard line. We talked about the situation of the tie being a factor. Of course, they are already a game behind in the loss column to Florida State and Virginia, so neither NC State nor Georgia Tech wants to add that crushing second loss. The tie keeps you in the hunt not only for first place still, but the runner-up spot, which is important for the Bowl Alliance. First and 10, North Carolina State. Score tied at 13. One timeout remaining for the Wolfpack. Bender. Escapes Kinsey. Comes upfield. Still on his feet. Into Georgia Tech territory. He's brought down at the 41-yard line. Clock stopped with 55 seconds left. Mike Williams has the tackle. Jeff Bender led them to victory a year ago. A remarkable run to give the chance to happen again. There is a Georgia Tech, or make it an NC State player, down on the field. It is Chris Pennyrode from Oviedo, Florida, a redshirt freshman. And he is down around midfield. Watch the remarkable effort of Jeff Bender. Flushed out of the pocket, somehow avoided the grasp of Richard Kimsey. Mitch Jordan and Jamal Cox, the two linebackers, couldn't get him managed to stay out of the way of his own blockers and finally Mike Williams and Marlon Williams brought him down. First and ten, clock moving, 49 seconds to go. Score time. Coleman, Rudolph and Richard Kimsey drive Jeff Bender back to his own territory at the 48. NC State uses its last timeout. That's the sixth sack of the day for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. See those stars on the back of the helmets. They represent significant plays for the Yellow Jackets. And this guy has made quite a few of them in his career. 
Bill Lewis talking to his defensive people up in the box as well as the troops gathered around him. They know the situation now for NC State is that they're more likely to work the sidelines to preserve those precious seconds on the clock. They know they can stop the clock momentarily on a first down. They know they can stop the clock by grounding the football right from a snap. But by the sack forcing the Wolfpack to use their last time out, Steve, they've really made it more difficult for Dick Sheridan to have his field goal team poised and composed when they go out to try the field goal if they get that opportunity here in the final seconds. To get into field goal range, they have to move the football down at least to the 25-yard line. And with Vitatic missing three today, they might even have to get it a little bit closer. They're looking at second down and 19. They're at their own 49-yard line. No timeouts left, 38 seconds remaining. Score tied at 13 apiece. Bender, over the middle, complete to Goins. 34. It's not good enough for a first down. The clock will continue to roll. It's third down and three. It'll bring up a 10-yard gain. 20 seconds left. State needs at least 10 more yards. Ball incomplete. Pass through the hands of Eddie Goins. That stops the clock but brings up fourth down with 16 seconds left. And a decision coming on the NC State sideline. Well, they'll try the field goal now. They didn't want to take the chance of not getting the first down and turning the ball back over. And now Georgia Tech will take a timeout. Just like you try and ice the free throw shooter in basketball. Try and make it tougher for a guy who has missed three already today. And he'll be asked to make a 51-yard field goal. Five yards longer than he's ever made one before in a college uniform. And of course, with the rain we have had for much of this afternoon, that carpet is slicker. It makes it tough for Vitatic to get that plant foot down. You notice how his teammates, they huddle around the coaches. They leave him to his own thoughts. He was over there at the spot a while ago, again, raising the nap of the carpet to make sure he had a solid place to plant that left foot to try and drive that right leg through the ball and across the crossbar for a game-winning field goal. Perhaps Georgia Tech will do all they can to keep Steve from accomplishing that for the Wolfpack. He hit its 46-yarder in the kickoff classic against Iowa in the first game of the season. He has made three kicks of 40-plus. This one is 51 yards. You see the angle. Kilpatrick to hold. Kick is up. Will it have legs? No good. There are still 11 seconds to play. Georgia Tech has three timeouts left. Steve Inetik had the angle that time, just not quite enough leg. From 51 yards, he's shy. So it makes it first and 10 for Georgia Tech. They'll have the ball at their own 34-yard line. I said they had three timeouts left. That's because that's what they have on the board, but they used that timeout on fourth down there. In reality, only two timeouts left for Georgia Tech, but with 11 seconds to play, two plays max probably remaining in this one. They'll only get to use probably one of them. Score tied at 13. Vitatic on his fourth miss of the day. He's missed from 31, 38, 40, and now 51 yards. First and 10, Georgia Tech. John Jones being pursued, throws the long ball for Walker. He got it! With one second to play, with one second to play, they can call a timeout. John Jones, the magician, as Tyler Lawrence unloaded on him. Jones is just now getting up. Somehow, Keenan Walker came up with the football. And Scott Sanders.
consistent as a chance to win it again. How he got rid of that ball with Tyler Lawrence breathing down on him. You see the NC State players had no idea where the football was. Ricky Turner, Mike Reed, Alan Johnson, they didn't want to interfere. Keenan Walker making up for the drop touchdown in the first half. A 54-yard pass, Sean Jones. I saw Tyler Lawrence, everybody in the place saw Lawrence ready to unload on him, and somehow Jones got the ball away before he was nailed. Three times this afternoon, Jones has eluded similar rushes. Ricky Turner now being helped from the field. Georgia Tech's field goal kicking unit is on. And the ball is dead in the middle of the field. It'll be about a 30 to 31 yard try. Easily bankable by Scott Sisson, who has made them much longer. Today he's missed a 46 yarder and has made kicks of 37 and 36, kicking into the same end zone. One second left. Low snap. Lifts the uprights, and Georgia Tech wins it 